it's time. This is the Media Night Podcast. Welcome to the Media Night Podcast. I'm your host, Zach, and this is a podcast about media. We'll talk about TV shows, video games, movies, music, podcasts, essentially anything that I listen to or watch throughout the week, I'm going to spit it back at you guys. So this week, we're going to be covering the movie Solo, a Star Wars story. And speaking of Solo, as you guys probably noticed, the podcast has also changed its name again. We have dropped the With the Boys, and now it's just Media Night. And John has officially left the podcast. I don't think he's coming back, and that's fine. We'll just move on, right? He can't, he decided he can't commit time to do anything for the podcast. So essentially, he decided to leave, and we'll just leave it at that. I don't really have much more to say about it. And yeah, right? So John is no longer with the Media Night Pod, and it's just going to be just you and me, right? I also got my brother sitting in here, right? He's going to be off screen for a little bit till we figure out how to do our setup, right? But just so you know, he's also here. <laughs> Before we talk about Solo, I want to, you know, talk about this stuff I ingested today or this week, essentially. TV wise, right? Watched last two episodes of She-Hulk, right? Episode five and six. To be honest, you guys probably know I'm not enjoying this show. Like, I really just... I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I can't say I hate the show, but I just got to say it's not for me, right? The CGI is just really, really bad, right? I don't care what anybody says. It does not have good CGI. Don't care. It does not. It looks like, it, it looks like poor CGI on a green screen. Like, it looked really, really bad. She was, like, standing there in her dress, like, and she had, like, the field, like, a field behind her because she's at a wedding. And it just looked so bad. And I just don't find the story entertaining. There is, There really is no story. It's just random crap happening to Jen. And just like, whatever. And, and I hate that I don't enjoy the show because I love the actress who plays She-Hulk. You know what I mean? Like, she's great. But it's just like, doesn't look good. Like, She-Hulk fought Titania in this one. I can't even remember how it went. Like, it was so, like, lackluster. You know what I mean? So, just, yeah, She-Hulk's not for me, but, I mean, a lot of a lot of people enjoy it. Um, but, you know, I'm going to keep watching it. I'll keep you guys in the loop, you know. Next week, I'll probably maybe talk a little bit more about what happened in the episodes. I'm not going to lie. I can't remember what the hell happened in episode five. To be honest, I think it was the weird magic one. Yeah, they brought Wong back and just... But they did have Madison with a Y, but not but not where you think, right? Some stupid drunk chick. And um, I don't know, but that was she was probably the best part of the episode. I mean, it's just really boring. I swear Disney needs to go and learn how courtrooms work because, like, it's just... It's not good. It's not good. I'm still waiting for Matt, like Daredevil, to show up, right? But still, like we get, we get a little bit of his, like in the fifth episode, she gets her superhero costume, which we still didn't see in episode six, right? No superhero outfit, like what? Come on! And then, but we do get a glimpse of Daredevil's yellow or gold helmet, whatever fucking color they decide to make. I don't know. I've seen pictures. It looks yellowy, gold, whatever. Don't like that design for Daredevil. It is what it is. I mean, if anything, that's his like OG design, like the um, the yellow suit. That's, so that's what he should have worn from the get go. And then this one, maybe give him the nice, cool, darker one. But it's because it's fucking She Hulk. It's supposed to be a comedy to make his suit light. You know what I mean? Let's see what they do with it because it's really 
really not. That it's just, I don't, I don't like it. I don't really care for it. I'm still gonna watch it because I want to see if it ties into anything that's gonna come in the future. Because who knows, right? Maybe we get the first glimpse of the leader because supposedly the leader is supposed to be the new villain in Captain America, like the new Captain America with Falcon. But it's like, why? When the fuck does Captain America deal with the fucking leader? Like, what? I don't give a shit. I don't want to watch that. Like, fuck. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I don't know. She-Hulk, not good. <laughs> so I finished Pokemon Master Journeys because for some reason in Canada they like to release it later, right? I don't understand why. But finally got to watch, you know, the 40 episodes of Pokemon Master Journeys which is before whatever they're doing right now, which I think, I can't, rem I can't remember when Dustin and Tyler said the new season of Pokemon is coming to North America, right? But it's supposed to be, I think it's soon, but I don't think they're going to go into the current, right? Like, so right now, they're in the tournament phase. So all the champions, right? They have eight champions, they're all like facing off, right? And so now we're down to the, to the finals, which is obviously between Ash and Leon. Right? So, I don't think that whatever we get, because I'm pretty sure we're supposed to get something soon, or at least America is. Like, Canada gets it so fucking late, it's ridiculous. But, and, and I've watched those episodes in Japanese, so I don't really, I don't care. But, basically, it'll go up to probably just before the tournament, right? And then, you know what I mean, then we'll have to wait, I don't know, another six fucking months to get the last part with the end of the tournament and stuff. But, again... I watch it in Japanese, so I'm going to see it. I think the new episode might be out, so i got to go check it out. And then, uh, yeah, see how the beginning of Ash vs. Leon goes, right, if they're going that route. Um, today, actually, Legends, Ar like Legends Arceus, you know, the game, the anime version of it actually dropped, right? So it's basically like Ash and Dawn, I think. I think it's the two of them get sucked into the past and then you see them like you know the outfit you get in the game they're essentially just wearing the outfits from the game like what your character and ray or the girl is called i don't know my guy was named, you know which is stupid they should have just used the same names right like if you if you had the girl the girl should have been you know what i mean like dawn that's it yeah like her name should have been dawn and then i don't remember what guy. that's pokemon right and speaking of Pokemon, I've actually finally finished Legends Arceus. Caught all the Pokemon. And yeah, it took me about a week. Realistically, it's not a long game, right? To do everything. I still have to do some side missions, but like, they're hella lame, right? So, yeah, we'll see. But yeah, Legends Arceus, I dig it. I give it a, I give it a thumbs up. It was a little, little too short, right? But, you know, caught everything. Caught Arceus. Then turned around and went to Diamond and Pearl. Caught Arceus again. Be like, yeah, I made you my bitch twice. You feel me? So, yeah, that's that's pretty much Pokemon for this week. You know, I did finish the new Cyberpunk TV show, right? It's re I fuck, I really enjoy it. it. There's a lot more blood and nudity than I thought was gonna be in a Netflix show, right? Like legit, people getting ripped in half, chicks fucking naked, walking around. You know what I mean? Or just sitting there having conversations with no shirts on. Random blue nipples. It was... It's crazy, right? And all it made me want to do is legitimately just buy Cyberpunk so I could play the game, right? And, yeah, once I finished the anime, I was like, ooh, David... Like, it's David Martinez is your main character. And it's basically just showing his life as, as he basically becomes, like... The badass criminal essentially and then he dies at the end of the anime spoiler <laughs> but right so the game so the show takes place before um the video game right so in the video game as soon as the show came out i believe they dropped a dlc called edge runners which the anime is called cyberpunk 2077 edge runners right which are these criminal thieves people right and yeah Basically, in the game, in Cyberpunk, the game, they put out the DLC where you can get David's jacket. You can get another character's like gun and stuff, so you can legitimately design your character to actually like just you could be David in the game, which is 
actually what I wanted to do. I wanted to get David's jacket, get the gorilla arms, and just run around, just fucking punch people, and then maybe shoot some people with the cannon arm, bro. Like, you could build that character in Cyberpunk, and that really made me, like, I really wanted to, like, not even just make David, but, like, take David's style and then make my own character, and then just, like, yeah, I'm Zach, bitch. Like, I'm not David, I'm, I'm Zach. And, but it, I have all the same abilities. I can, like, slow down time. I got the fucking, you know, gorilla arms, which are basically, like, good punching weapons. And then you can modify your arm to have a cannon on it, which is exactly what he has in the, in the show. You know what I mean? So, and then you get his jacket. His jacket's fucking badass, right? Like, I didn't like it at first. It's just, like, bright yellow jacket. And... It grew on me. By the end of the series, I was like, yeah, I like that shit. I want that. And so you get it for free in the game, right? Like, you don't have to pay for the DLC in the game. And then, yeah, you get download the DLC, and then boom. It's literally like, you just, I think you do a mission, and then you get it as a reward. And it's a piece of legendary gear. So, you know, you we know legendary gear, what that means. That means that's a, a good piece of fucking gear, right? So if you could pick that up right off the bat, boom you're you know what i mean you got a nice fucking jacket or i don't know how the armor works in that game right but you get a legendary piece of gear if if the mission's easy enough right the other stuff to make him basically give him all the rest of the stuff that that david has in the show you have to put in some work so you can't technically start as david right but you might be able to get his jacket and look like you get the hairstyle you know what i mean and then he doesn't wear a shirt and then he just wears some regular pants and boots, right? So he's not so, it's not bad to like edit or not edit, but I would say create. Next, I finished all, well, all of my Prince of Tennis rewatch, right? Or at least Prince of Tennis 1, not including the OVAs where they win nationals, which I'm kind of pissed off that Crunchyroll doesn't have. Um, but who knows? Maybe they'll get them and I'll finally get to freaking watch Tezuka fuck some people up in the Tez. Tezuka Zone, right? Yo, I love that show so much, bro. It's the most animated sports fucking show ever. They they are like literally playing tennis, but like fucking blasting Kamehameha's at each other and shit, bro. It's insane. You got guys doing fucking crazy acrobatics while they're hitting balls and shit, you know what I mean? And yeah, so ba- but basically it's just a show about tennis. Like a high sc- like not even a high school a uh, middle school tennis squad, right? And basically it's about them winning nationals, right? It goes from this kid, the prince of tennis, he's like, he's freshman essentially, right? First year, and he's he's the only first year on the team. He's pretty much like the first or second best player on the team, right? Next to Tezuka, right? Because he's the captain and he's... He's got fucking ultra instinct, bro. It's fucking insane. You know what I mean? Right? Like, when he goes into the Tesco zone, I'm probably even saying his name wrong. Probably, yeah. But he goes, and basically, he gets that fucking, like, white aura around him, and he just, like, sucks balls, like, into him. Pause. But, yeah, like, 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 so it's basically like a world, so he, like, like, so the ball could be, like, going, like, he just stands in the middle of the court, right? So the ball could be going past him. And then he just kind of, it just comes into his zone and then he fucking smacks it. You know what I mean? Like, it's absolutely insane. The physics of this just make no sense. So these fucking people have superpower. It's insanity. You know what I mean? And I love it. I love every second of it. It is the most anime thing you could fucking possibly think of. Just so over the top. I love it. I love it. Love it. And right now... The reason I rewatched it is basically because they have a new season of it out. Now they're fucking doing the world tournament, right? So now we get to see Echizen back in there, Prince of Tennis, fucking shit up. But now he's part of Team Japan. So all the people that they played against are now all fucking teammates, you know? And yeah, and now they're playing the world and we get to see like these fucking a- Like I swear to God, Japan makes everybody like assholes from every other country just fucking assholes. You know what I mean? And it's like, you guys are tennis players. Why are you so fucking stuck up? You know what I mean? But I don't know. I love it. I love it. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much Prince of Tennis, right? The tennis. So yeah, so yeah, we watched Ring of Power number four. And I have to say, I'm not enjoying 
Lord of the Rings Rings of Power. It's just kind of boring. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 very hard it's it's very hard for me to like get into it for some reason. And like even this last episode, what was it? I think I was fucking playing Pokemon while we were watching it. So like I can't re- I don't really know what the hell happened. Right? I like I have bits and pieces of, of it. I'll probably watch it again. Probably not, because it's kind of boring. You know what I mean? We have a new episode to watch that actually came out today that we were supposed to watch before recording, but but we decided to watch the Mike Tyson TV. <laughs> you know, the new episode of the Mike Tyson TV show, which I'm not really going to get into here because it's about his, like, this, the newest episode of the Mike Tyson show, right? It's a biography about him, and it was about when he got, basically when he got charged for sexually assaulting that this woman. You know what I mean? So that was that was this episode. There was another episode, but you know what I mean? We had to come record this, right? But yeah, I like that show. I guess I guess I should talk about it a little bit, right? It's basically like a biography about Mike Tyson, his life, just behind the scenes type thing. And the actor they got doesn't look like Mike Tyson, you know what I mean? But he sounds like Mike Tyson, you know what I mean? And the only issue I have with this is like, is this was like, is this okayed by Tyson? But it must be because they wouldn't be able to do this unless Tyson sold his life rights some something. You know what I mean? But I don't think that's the case. So he must have approved this, right? So, but he was charged for it. But you know what I mean? I don't remember if he said he didn't do it. You know what I mean? So, but that kind of proves that he did do it, right? I don't know. But yeah, the Mike Tyson show. Um, but yeah, Ring Rings of Power is kind of meh, right? I don't know. You you pay more attention to that. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, it's very, very slow. Like, it's... I don't know, man. Like, you got this Disney Plus fucking Andor nonsense. Like, this shit sucks, bro. Like, it sucks so bad, I don't even want to watch it. You know what I mean? So... I might be cutting Star Wars for Andor, not doing that, right? I'm going to watch it because I watch fucking everything. I'm just not going to let anybody know I watched it because fucking, it just seems very bad. Don't give a shit about Andor. You know what I mean? Like, we know what happens to the fucking main character because he dies in the fucking Rogue One movie. So, like, I don't give a shit. I don't care how he got to the fucking movie, realistically. Don't care. Don't care. So... Probably not covering Andor on this one. Well, like, I mean, it's bad enough I'm covering She-Hulk that I don't like. And, um, but yeah, fuck that. Fuck. I'm not, I'm not doing two shows again, you know. At least with Obi-Wan, it was good. Marvel was mid, right? I disliked Miss Marvel. But I think I'm just Marveled out. And I just don't give a shit. Like, fuck Disney, right? You know what I mean? The only thing that was good about Disney was the fact of in Canada here, Disney is who we have Hulu is attached to our Disney Plus. So we only pay for Disney Plus and we get all the Hulu shit. So, you know, I get to watch Prey on, on Disney Plus. This this these last two weeks actually, podcast wise, I listened to chapter one and two of Marvel's Wastelanders. Um, Doom, right? So they have all these other podcasts. Right? It's all in the same playlist thing, right? It's all Marvel's Wastelanders, but they've had Old Man Star Lord. Um, remember, man? I don't know. My fucking head hurts. Uh, Marvel's Wastelanders Wolverine. Like, if that's one of them, I've, like, you know what I mean? Whatever the case may be, it's set in this futuristic timeline where the villains won. Right? Actually, no, yeah, it is. Marvel's Wastelanders Wolverine, because the story Wolverine goes and he, he supposedly gets killed by Red Skull. Turns out, obviously, he can't kill fucking Wolverine. So then Wolverine shows up, kills fucking... Uh, kills Red Skull, who's president of the world. Red Skull has killed the majority of the heroes. So that's what the Wastelanders is. is a bunch of heroes all spread out. Right? So Star-Lord, Wolverine. This one has Doom and Valeria. And Valeria is Reed Richards, Mr. Incredible, Mr. Fantastic. His daughter. What else? I can't even remember what else. Oh, they had a Black Widow one and a Hawkeye. Black Widow Hawkeye. And uh, I enjoy the series, but this Doom one is a little confusing 
it's a bit of a continuation of the Star Lord story, right? But there's like basically think of like America is split up, right? So like Doom controlled one part, Red Skull controlled another part, right? Like all the villains control different sections, I guess, of the United States, right? Because the mutants, like Canada is a, a refuge for mutants. Like they say, come here if you don't like mutants are hunted in America. Yeah, come to Canada, mutants. Right, that's what it. That's that. It is what it. Is. But I mean, I enjoy it. And then like this, this story, I really don't know what's going on in 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 the Doom one, right? Because it's kind of just random. Like Valeria randomly went to go find Doom, right? Found Doom. Doom wanted to go to this place, so basically, she's driving him back. They get attacked. Da, 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 da. and that's it you know what i mean so like they really haven't gone anywhere in the story so i can't there's not too much to talk about but it's very good it's just audio drama of super like you know superheroes i love my superheroes right so i'm gonna listen to it the other podcast that i actually finished off was it's a batman podcast called batman the audio adventures right so season one and they, they recently, I don't know if they put out all the episodes and took them down and then re-released all the episodes, but episodes like 3 to 10 all of a sudden just came out on the same day. So I don't know what happened there, but I finally finished that. I actually really enjoy that series. It's somewhat interconnected like stories, but it seems it's it's almost like a different kind of story happening each episode type of thing. So, you know, he deals with the Penguin, he deals with Two-Face, right? He has an ongoing thing with the with the Joker, you know, an ongoing thing with the Riddler, Catwoman's in it, you know, Commissioner Gordon, and, it, and the voice cast for it, bro. Like, Rosaria Dawson is Catwoman. Um, John, L- L- I can never say his fucking last name, but you know that, that fucking that spanish guy he's fucking hilarious he's in he's in a lot of shit if i showed you a picture you'd know exactly who he is. he he does the voice of the riddler you know what i mean like they have a good voice cast for for a lot of these characters and it's 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 pretty good right so yeah the batman the audio adventure season one and season two is actually coming out very soon right so i'm excited for when that drops i love my audio dramas bro they get me through work Right, and um, that's pretty much it, podcast wise. Um, on the music front, I listen to too many podcasts, so I don't have a chance to listen to much music. But the baby dropped a new album, uh, Baby on Baby Two, right? And uh, you know, the baby's like one of my favorite artists. It's like, look at my T-shirt, blame it on baby. You know what I mean? Like, so I I figured I'd just mention that. I enjoyed it. You know what I mean? It's the baby, right? If you like the baby, you like the baby on baby too. In the last two weeks, I know I'm a little late, right? But we had the Assassin's Creed presentation, the 15 year anniversary for Assassin's Creed, right? We've had the Nintendo Direct. We've also had State of Play, PlayStation. So essentially, I'm just going to quickly run through some of the releases, you know, that me and my brother are kind of interested in. You know what I mean? Or would be interested in playing. Uh, I'm not going to run through everything, right? Because a lot of this stuff, if I'm not interested, I didn't really pay attention to it. You know what I mean? Right? So, essentially, PlayStation, state of play, right? We got trailer for Tekken 8, the newest Tekken game, right? We got a dope-ass trailer for God of War Ragnarok. Like, I'm so excited to play that fucking game like you have no idea it looks fucking insane we have a yakuza spin-off game called like a dragon aishin another trailer for the hogwarts legacy with they're saying i did see online that they're saying playstation is going to have an advantage so i guess they showed off the playstation exclusive quest right um There's a new kind of samurai Ghost of Tsushima style game called The Rise of the Ronin, right? This open world samurai game. It looks pretty good. I mean, from what I've seen, you know what I mean? You watched more of it, but I thought it looked cool, right? I like Ghost of Tsushima, right? And it seems a lot along those lines, right? And then lastly, 
Stellar Blade, a Korean futuristic Devil May Cry style game. I have no idea what I have no idea. But if it's on the list, then I more than likely want to play it. So I'll take your word for it. So it's just like a, it's like a, basically a beat em up Dev, Devil May Cry, like waves and waves, Bayonetta. So kind of like the original God of War beat em up style. Like, you know, you got to fight the big bosses, but you're also fighting a whole ton of dudes, but doing crazy combos and shit like that, essentially. That's cool. I guess, I mean, yeah, it's on the list, so definitely probably check it out, right? Um, and that's pretty much it for the state of play, right? We like fighting and killing people in our video games, so, I mean, you're not going to see... <laughs> you're not going to hear me talk about, like, Animal Crossing. Can't kill nobody in Animal Crossing. I don't care. I'm sorry. So, we'll jump to the Nintendo Direct. Essentially, we get a new Fire Emblem called Fire Emblem Engage, right? We got a dope-ass trailer. Like, I was mad hyped for it, but a dope trailer for Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. It's essentially Breath of the Wild 2, right? I don't know why they just named it, because it really confused me, but you look at it and you're like, this looks exactly like Breath of the Wild, but the name isn't Breath of the Wild 2, so is it a new game? But then Nintendo came out and said, yes, it's the direct sequel to Breath of the Wild. So it is Breath of the Wild 2, but Tears of the Kingdom, all right? Whatever, right? We got a trailer for Bayonetta 3. Since Bayonetta 2, since they basically toned down, like, like Bayonetta was supposed to be, you know, this hot chick that her hair is essentially, like, her main wep, like, her main magic clothes are made out of her hair, and, you know, Karen's complained, and all of a sudden now... Bayonetta now her hair doesn't take her all her clothes off. I mean, it wasn't like they were showing her like you know what I mean, like her boobs or anything, right? They were still covered up, but it was like, oh no, it's she's a pretty much naked woman. Let's fucking let's boycott this game, right? Like, fuck off, you know what I mean? So then in number two, they basically made it so that yeah, it doesn't happen anymore. Her clothes stay on, and it's like, yeah, I don't care, right? Um, <laughs> right, but I mean, it, 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 the game's Bayonetta. And then, lastly, for Nintendo Direct, we got we're getting more Nintendo 64 games. And the biggest one to come out of that would probably be Goldeneye 007 Goldeneye. And it's gonna have online connectivity, which me and the What in the Anime boys have already been talking about how we're gonna play that shit. So, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for that. You know what I mean? And yeah, they they were dropping all like the Mario parties or whatever Mario parties were on 64, which kind of useless because you have Mario All Stars, which is essentially all the fucking games put together. You know what I mean? So it's like I can play the old one if I wanted to a degree. You know what I mean? But whatever. And yeah, that's pretty much Nintendo Direct. All right. So next up we have. The Ubisoft stuff, and to be honest, there wasn't really anything good, so we're just gonna skip all of that, and we'll just talk straight about 15th year anniversary of Assassin's Creed, right? We got a dope-ass, like, live-action trailer where they have, like, real people, like, playing the characters, and they, like, switch between, like, all, like, the different games and stuff, right? But all live-action, right? Like, dope ass commercial i mean i'm pretty sure i posted it on the socials so i mean go check out the socials and you'll, you'll see it's a dope ass trailer right but first up we got mirage assassin's creed mirage right it's about basim who is from valhalla right if you've played valhalla he's the assassin in that game so this game takes place 20 years before the events of valhalla and it takes place in Baghdad. So, to be honest, don't really care too much about Basim. He's kind of a whatever. I didn't like him in Valhalla, so I don't really care too much. But the game looks great, right? So, I'm going to play it, obviously, because it's Assassin's Creed. You know what I mean? But other than that, I mean, it it looks good. So, yeah. Assassin's Creed Mirage. Um, next up, we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla. 
the last chapter is going to be a free story mission. I guess kind of just to end Eivor's story, essentially, right? Which is kind of good because we didn't really get... You don't really get endings with, like, the rest of them. Like, we got we got an ending with Ezio. We kind of got an ending for Altair and Cassandra. But, like, everybody else, not too sure what happens to them, right? So, it'll be nice to see how it goes. But, I mean, who knows? She may just go to another place and then all of a sudden she's doing some other shit. So, then now we have no idea what the hell she's doing over there, right? Um... Then we have Assassin's Creed, codenamed Jade, which is going to be a mobile game. You get to make your own character, like so it'll be the first time you get to make your own character. And it also takes place in China, right? So it's going to be pretty dope. You're going to be able to like free run, climb, you know, the Great Wall, do all of that stuff, you know what I mean? So that's going to be very interesting. But first mobile, like open world mobile game. It's gonna be that's a big task. That's a big task, Ubisoft. Let's uh we'll see if you have that in you. <laughs> um then we got Assassin's Creed, codename Red, which this is what everybody's been asking for. Give us assassins in Japan. And you know what? That's what they're doing. So this is supposed to be a different style Assassin's Creed game, so I'm kind of getting them mixed up right now, but I don't know if Mirage is supposed to be just continuing on like this new style, like Valhalla, and then like Codename Red will be going back to the stealth and everything. I th I'm pretty sure that's how it's going to go. But, you know, we get to be a ninja. It takes place in Japan, right? So, you know, give me, give me some shurikens, a ninjato. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm down with all that shit. So, yeah, Assassin's Creed, Codename Red. Taking place in Japan. About damn time. Then, probably the game we got the least amount of information about is Assassin's Creed, codename Hexy. Right? It's going to be another new styled game, and it looks like it takes place during the witch, witch trial era, right? That's what I'm assuming, and I think a lot of people on the internet are also assuming. Um, but we don't know what, what it's about. I have I have a feeling it's going to be like they're kind of magical magic-y type game, right? So yeah, we'll 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 see where that goes, but we didn't really get any information on that. Um we have Project Infinity, which is going to be their new online multiplayer hub essentially and that's probably where they're going to drop their multiplayer game. So we're waiting for more news on that, right? And then Um, and then, so, and then lastly, we're getting a Netflix Assassin's Creed show, right? Hopefully it's better than the movie, but who knows, right? I mean, me, me and my brother are going to rewatch the, the Assassin's Creed movie, do a review on it. So yeah, I can't really remember what happens in it. So that's probably not a good sign. But hopefully the TV show does uh, much better. Um, and then Netflix is also supposedly making uh, a mobile game. So like Netflix and Assassin's Creed are doing some kind of mobile game. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. And then, yeah, so they're also doing live concerts. We're getting new art books. There's also going to be a podcast, like an Assassin's Creed podcast. I'm about that life, you know what I mean? We're getting some new novels and a new webtoon for Black Flag. And uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps up Assassin's Creed 15, 15th anniversary. All right, so let's jump into the movie Solo, a Star Wars story. Now, I'm going to start off by saying probably one of my favorite Star Wars movies. Like, it was like re watching it, I was like, this is good. Like, I did not, don't get me wrong. You know, there was a couple cheesy things, but I mean, fuck, I all I can always pick those up. You know what I mean? Other than those pretty cheesy, like couple cheesy lines, I love this movie. This movie's fucking great. I love the spin, like the spinoff comics, like with the the like the bounty hunter war in the comics, and they brought Kira back. Kira's running basically, Crimson Dawn and stuff, and it's 
I like it. I, I really like it. And then how they kind of brought this out, right? And then we get to learn, you know, I mean, a little bit about some of the syndicates, right? Like in the Obi Wan show, we learned about the Pike Syndicate, right? This movie, we get to learn about the Crimson Dawn, and um, don't really think we we know much about Crimson Dawn or the or the Pikes other than these two sets of media, right? And then you have the comic book. If you're not too familiar with the comic books, all you have the movie. And uh, to be honest, I don't really keep up with the Star Wars comics. I do check in on them every now and then, or I'll listen to a review about it, right? Uh, Weird Science is really good for that. That podcast where talked, talk basically about the whole thing. So if you really missed something, you could just check in with them and they kind of fill you in on, you know, what the hell's going on in Marvel, DC, and small podcast shout out <laughs> um but yeah so let's let's get in let's get into the movie so the movie opens with words on the screen i don't know why they didn't do the scrolling text it would have made a lot more sense because it had a lot to fucking say there not i guess not as much as your normal you know scrolling text but still right but whatever we get a bunch of words flashing on the screen so it starts with A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. It is a lawless time. Crime syndicates compete for resources, medicine, food, hyperfuel. On the shipbuilding planet of Corellia, foul lady Proxima forces her runaway into a life of crime in exchange for shelter and protection. On these mean streets, a young man fights for survival, but yearns to fly among the stars. We cut to Han Solo, young Han Solo, right? And I gotta say, this guy does a pretty good job, right? But I mean, um, what's his face? Harris, Harrison Ford, or whatever his name is? He kind of is grumpy, right? So by the time we get Han Solo in the original thing, he's kind of grumpy and grouchy. But I mean, it kind of makes sense how, why, through the events of this movie whatever right so so basically yeah so we cut to han solo he's hot wiring like a speeder right and we see he's basically running from like a big group of people right we later learn that he stole some shit right from these people i guess some coaxium right this fuel the fuel that is the whole plot of the movie right so they steal a little bit at the beginning he goes he escapes in the speeder, and then we see a meet up with Kira, right? This is where we get introduced to Kira, Han Solo's, I guess, first love, right? It was Princess Leia before Princess Leia. We then see them basically try to leave, and they get stopped by Proxima's henchmen. And yeah, so then they get taken to Proxima. We get, you know, this kind of, you know, back and forth, and Proxima's this dirty looking worm thing. Like, why are all the fucking crime bosses disgusting worm creatures? Like, what makes them so fucking powerful, right? I don't get it. Why? Why? Like, especially, like, Proxima, she can't be in the sunlight. We get this back and forth with Proxima and Han, and, you know, she's like, well, you fucked up, so are you gonna pay me? Like, what's the deal, right? And Han does this cheesy fucking trick with a stone, right? Pretends that it's a fucking grenade. Makes some bullshit, like, like clicking noise with his mouth. And then pretends it's like a, like a bomb. And he's like, it's a bomb. I just, I just triggered it. And Proxima's like, no, you didn't. You just made a clicking noise with your mouth, right? Like, it was super cheesy. And that's what this is. That's one of those cheesy jokes that I just, I was like, why? Right, so Han throws the rock, breaks the glass, right, and Proxima gets hit with some sunlight and fucking sizzles up, so she dives into her fucking gross pool of water, right, and fucking Han and Kira get away. They basically take off in their speeder. Han and Kira are basically about home free, and then all of a sudden, this guy, or like one of the hen- one of Proxima's henchmen, right, 
the dirty worm looking dude, right? Who also got burned by the sun, but he wears a cool mat, right? He gets his, these dogs, picks up some crew dudes, jumps in this big ass, like, it'd be like a pickup truck, essentially, equivalent to like a speeder, right? And just chases down Han, catches up to them. You know, we get a cool little chase scene very, very quickly, right? Han and Kira try and drive through the tiniest little fucking, like, literally vertical crack. So Han, you know what I mean, turns the fucking speeder sideways, gets stuck at the very end, right? This will come back later on in the movie, but this is what he does at the very beginning of the movie. So... They get into the room. They make the bargain with one of the, like, officers to let them through for the Quaxium, right? And right as Han and Kira are about to go through, Kira gets snatched, right, by the goons. You know what I mean? So then they get separated. So Han, you know, is all pissed off, right? And so the way he... And then he basically goes into hiding. And the way he gets away is by joining the Imperial Army. Which, I was like, well, that's kind of fucked up, you know what I mean? You join the Imperial fucking... All right, dog. All right. <laughs> so, when when he joins the army, this is actually when he gets his last name, right? If I, like, he's like, my name's Han. What's your last name? Don't have one. Who's your people? I don't have none. Hmm. And the guy's like, hmm. Solo it is then, right? And then he says, all right. Good luck, Han Solo. And I'm like, okay, that's how he got his name. Cool. So then we cut to a battlefield, right? And this is where we see Han and we get to meet Beckett, right? And Han notices something's kind of up with Beckett, right? But he's wearing a captain's uniform, but he's not answering when anybody, like, you know what I mean, says anything to him. So basically, he goes, confronts him, and he tries to be like, oh, you guys are here to do a job. Like, let me join right and he's like oh okay like and becca's like yeah no and then he's like oh okay and then he calls over this dude this lower rank than supposed captain beckett and says you know what i mean tries to go and snitch on him and then it just gets completely turned around on him and then beckett's like yeah this guy's a traitor get rid of him and so they get they fucking take Han and throw him in a pit and then he gets thrown into this pit with this wookie where Basically, this Wookiee just starts, is there to just kill people, I guess. You know what I mean? Because the guards were like, you kill people too fast, slow down, right? So Han, some reason, can speak a Wookiee, right? Terrible, terrible Wookiee too sounds, right? But he convinces this Wookiee to let him, to basically work with him, and they can get out of here and escape, right? So they pretend to fight. They break a pole, guards fall down, the two of them escape, right? I think this is also where we find out what his actual name is, and we learn that this is Chewbacca. So this is the beginning of Han and Chewie, you know what I mean? Pretty fucking cool, right? You kind of always wanted to know how they met, and basically Chewie was going to rip Han's arms off. So it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's pretty good origin origin story as it goes. Like I, Like I said, I really like this movie, you know what I mean? So as they escape, they head over to Beckett's ship, right? And Beckett's about to leave them, but then the pilot, right? The pilot's name was Quinn, right? Do you know who voiced the pilot? No. It was um John Favreau. You know that you know who that is, right? He he plays so many characters in Star Wars. It's absolutely insane, right? So the pilot, Quinn, kind of convinces Beckett to let let them come because he's like oh come on you know you don't know what it's like to to curl up in a Wookiee's lap and take a nap right like he's just like they want like he want they want the the Wookiee they don't give a shit about on right so <laughs> right so they go they stop they pick him up pick them up right um then we get a scene they arrive on the snow planet and we get a quick little back and forth between Han and Chewie, right? But th I think this is actually where we learn Chewie's name, right? He's he's like, oh, che Chewbacca. We gotta we gotta think of something, you know what I mean, right? And um, right. 
So, you know, they have a little quick back and forth. And the funny part about that was, like, Han is like, you know, they wanted me, not you. You're only here because of me. Meanwhile, it's clearly the other way around. Like, I love the dynamic they have. Because, like, you know Chewie's like, whatever, dude. Like, you're wrong, but okay. You know what I mean? Like, you know Chewie be talking mad shit, right? <laughs> so then we see Beckett. Han and Val, right, who's the last member of the crew, um, and also Beckett's, like, girl, right? And they're scouting out this kind of, I think there's, like, they're scouting out, like, a train, right? So on this train is essentially, it's filled with whatever, right? But one of the carts at least has this coaxium in it, which is this crazy, highly explosive fuel, right? So the... After scouting the train, they head back, and now it's nighttime, and they're all sitting around a fire. We Han tells the crew what his story is, why he's doing what he's doing to get back to Corellia. And, yeah, and then basically after the story, we cut to the next day, right? Now they're prepping to go and actually rob the train. Or not, they're not prepping. They're starting to go and do everything to rob the train, right? And so, yeah, so they start the heist. And basically, they find what they were looking for, like, really quick. Like, they knew exactly what train it was in or what card it was in. And, yeah, so they open it up. They find it. And as they find it, though, these stormtroopers come out of nowhere, right? And, you know, we get a little quick little battle, right? You know, they're stormtroopers. They can't shoot for shit. Basically, they unhook one of, like, the back of the train, right? So the back half of the train kind of leaves. So now it's just the one thing that they're looking for. And now they have to, like, uncouple it from the front side of the train, right? And as they go and they get the cargo, like, unhooked, the pirates show up, right? They show up on these cool fucking Lobo-style fucking speeder space bikes. You know what I mean? Badass. Don't get me wrong, right? So they come in, and, you know, they try and steal the cargo from them. So everybody's fighting, and essentially one of the guys gets onto the, onto the ship. And he actually shoots Quinn, right? So Solo heads back onto the ship, right? We go and we see Quinn dies. But so Han is now flying the ship, right? So Han picks up the picks up the cargo. Chewie unhooks it. But all the pirates are now attached to the cargo, right? So now they're kind of fighting back and forth. And Han, and they're flying towards a mountain. And Han is like, dude, we cannot keep the load and not crash like we have to let it go and beckett's like don't do like do not do it and basically he does it you know what I mean? he drops the load and even the pirates drop the load like the pirates couldn't hold on to it either and then we just get this big explosion right oh yeah i forgot i forgot to mention this is where chewy gets his you know iconic bandolier i always like call it a banderdoli because like i was like i don't know how to say that word. So, but a bandolier, right? That makes way more sense. Uh, yeah, so he gets his iconic bandolier, right? So after landing, Beckett's fucking pissed, right? And then we learn that they were actually working for Crimson Dawn. And they get killed because they have to pay them back for the supposed card. Which doesn't make sense to me because they weren't paid in the first place, so they shouldn't owe them shit. You know what I mean? Whatever, Star Wars, Star Wars logic. So they have to pay them back for this lost cargo, right? So essentially they go and they head to the meeting place where they have to meet up with, I guess, the leader of this section of the Crimson Dawn, Dryden. He's on this, they call it a yacht, but it's literally fucking a building who, that's a ship. Like, it's literally just like a tall fucking building that can fly. You know what I mean? And they call it a yacht, right? So they head to the yacht, there's a big party, and, you know, Han's walking around, like, Beckett's like, don't talk to anybody, don't look at anybody, and so Han's like, whatever, he kind of wanders off, and, oh, lo and behold, who taps him on the shoulder? Fucking Kira, right? <laughs> so, she says she's working on the yacht, right? So they catch up for a little bit, and then we find out that she actually knows Beckett, right? Dryden comes out, and then we learn Kira is a lieutenant of Dryden's working with, or she's part of 
Crimson Dawn, and we see her tattoo. He basically takes them back upstairs. Beckett essentially tries to convince Dryden to give them a second chance. And so they say, okay, we're going to rob the Pike Syndicate, right? So essentially, Dryden's like, well, we can't do that because I've made deals with the Syndicate. They're both syndicates, right? But, like, Crimson Dawn has made a deal with, 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 um, with the Pikes. Where, so they can't steal from him, but it's like, we don't work for you. Like, I mean, like, we're not, we're, we are, like, Han is like, we're not Crimson Dawn, so we can go and steal the shit, and if we get caught, it has no connection to you, right? To that logic, he's like, okay, I like the sounds of that, but I'm gonna send Kira with you. Now, boom, now you just sent a connection to Crimson fucking Dawn with the guys going to rob the fucking Pike, right? whatever, right? So, essentially, they say they need a fast ship, right? So, then we see Kira, we see the group, essentially, they go to this planet, and this is where we get introduced to fucking Lando Calrissian. And so, basically, Han challenges, like, Han tries to trick him into playing a game of Sabacc, tries to hustle him, right? But we find out that he was cheating. Right? Lando is hiding cards in his sleeve, right? So he's about to win the ship, and then Han loses, right? So then Kira comes out and she kind of convinces Lando, you know what I mean, to help them. They're going to go and do the Kessel Run. And this is where we meet L337, right? Lando's navigation bot, essentially, right? And she's got some crazy fucking, like, some crazy spunky attitude, right? She's, she's, she's a great character, you know what I mean? Like, it's very shitty, right? So, he agrees, they go, and they head to the ship, right? And this is where we get to see a nice, beautiful, pretty, brand spanking new looking Millennium Falcon, right? Dope, right? It's not missing all the plates and shit that, like, you know, the regular... Um, the regular ship that we're used to seeing, it's nice, painted, crisp, you know what I mean? Great, great, right? So, they take off on the ship, but then we also see that the pirates were kind of tracking them, and they placed a tracker on the Falcon, so they will know when they come back with, basically, the quacks, you know what I mean? So they'll plan to just rob them when they get back. Oh, yeah, they could go do all the work. We'll take that shit. Feel me? <laughs> so, we then see Han in the cockpit talking to Lan Lando, and he, like, you just see it in his face, like, Han is like, I love this ship. You know what I mean? And you kind of you kind of get to see him creating his you know, connection to the ship, right? Like, as as much as, you know, R2-D2 is a character, the Millennium Falcon is technically a character, especially later on in the movie when they do what they do, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's pretty cool getting to see him, like, be like, like, oh my god, this is, this is amazing, like, you know what I mean? And then they go into hyperdrive and he's just like, oh, like, you could tell, like, he likes... He loves, like, being in space, being a pilot. Like, it's... I enjoy that part of the movie, you know what I mean? That was good, right? So then, after after a little while, right, they leave and we get to see Chewie and Beckett and they're fucking playing, like, that chess game, like, with the fucking hologram monsters and shit. I was like, I don't know a game that is, but I'd play the fuck out, right? And I actually think this is where Beckett gives... Chewy, the nickname Chewy, instead of having to call him Chewbacca, like you know what I mean. And I was like, okay, so that's how he got his nickname, Chewy, right? But it seemed like Chewy's not very difficult to uh, come up with, you know what I'm saying? So we then get a scene with Han and Kira, right? They're reconnecting. They start making out, and then boom, they get interrupted by fucking Beck, goddamn cockblock Beck, right? But, so then we see the ship 
comes out of hyperspace and now they have to travel through this like maelstrom right which is essentially a space storm right i don't know what the fuck <laughs> right but so then next we get the ship arriving on the planet and they initiate their plan right they use han and chewy essentially as like slate like they pretend that they're slaves so that they'll be able to go in find the vault with the raw quaxium or whatever or unrefined quaxium steal it take it back right so they initiate their plan and as they get into the elevators, Han and Chewie beat the shit out of the guard and kill him. Like, Chewie rips off his arms, you know what I mean? And that's just kind of a callback to, like, they say, like, a Wookiee will rip your arms off, right? So they, they that's the only reason why they did that shit. And he's just, like, standing there, like, <laughs> ripped his arms off. You know what I mean? It was kind of stupid. Not gonna... that's, see, that's one of the cheesy fucking jokes from the movie, right? But whatever, you know what I mean? Um, okay. So, Kira, L3, Beckett, they all go with, like, the leader of, like, I guess the minds or whatever, right? And they're about to, you know, have this conversation, and Han and Chewie took out the camera, right? So one of the droids watching the cameras goes to report it. So as he reports it, Beckett just kills everybody in the room, right? And uh, then Kira kills the fucking leader of the the mine, right? So L3 goes, pops a fucking disc off and says, yeah, free all the other robots, right? And just a fucking shit show just starts, bro. I was like, this is fucking weird. All these robots, like, stepping on the computers and shit. It's like, oh, come on, dudes. You know what I mean? But here also, too, I must mention Beckett's wearing the outfit that Lando wore. Right in 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 a uh, Return of the Jedi, yeah, yeah, the outfit that cool with that cool helmet and the fucking weird little mouth mouthpiece thing that looks like fingers going across his face. You know what I mean? So Lando, I guess, I guess, I guess Lando kept that outfit from when Beckett wore it on the planet. You know what I mean? Because it's the exact same outfit. You know what I mean? So that's pretty. That's pretty cool, right? Um. So essentially, Han. And Chewie are, like, downstairs. They're heading for the vault, right? Chewie sees another Wookiee, which I don't know why this Wookiee's face looks so fucked up. It looked like a Sasquatch. It didn't look like a Wookiee. It was very weird. But it was speaking Wookiee, so whatever. And so Chewie comes across another Wookiee, and he decides to go and help, go and help them. So Han's like, all right, buddy, whatever, go ahead. And so he throws him his weapon, and then Han heads to the vault by himself. So then we see Han, he quickly gets into the vault. He starts loading up the fuel. Then we see Lando, he's recording himself, telling some weird fucking story, you know what I mean? Probably about how he got, how he got one of his fucking cloaks or whatever, right? But then he sees, like, this commotion, so he contacts L3 to find out what happened and learns that she's the one who did all this fucking nonsense, right? So <laughs> then we see Han, he's now moving all the cargo out and he's about to get fucking like caught by the, like the, the remaining guards when Chewie and whoever shows up and fucking kill the guards very quickly. You know what I mean? So then they boom, they go and they escape with the fucking loot. You know what I mean? So as they come outside, um, like the crew, like they're all shooting down all the things while the Wookiees essentially load up all the Quaxium onto the ship. And during this, or no, right as they're about to leave, L3 gets fucked up, bro. Like, I don't know what hit her, but she got decimated for some reason. So then Lando freaks out, runs over to go and save him, or save her, and he gets shot in the process. So Han and, and, and Chewie, they run out. Chewie picks up fucking L Lando and L3, brings him back onto the ship. They get on the ship and they fucking take off, right? Essentially, as they're escaping, L3 fucking finally, like, dies. I don't know if a robot can die. Whatever the case may be, she dies. And as as the crew gets back to the, mail, the maelstrom, they as they enter it, they're about to get fucking jumped by, you know, the fucking Imperial cruiser shows up and drops off some fucking TIE fighters. 
and yeah we get a cool little chase scene they have to drive like they have to fly into the maelstrom right they end up heading to basically a black hole in the in the maelstrom and they run into this fucking nasty multi-eyed squid thing so they kind of trick it to get like away to get away from it they kind of trick it into getting sucked into the maelstrom right and then you know they do use some some of that fucking fuel hit a fucking boost right take off and you know what i mean they get the fuck out of there right so then this is where we learn about you know what i mean them doing this whole fucking you know this is this is where essentially they do the que- the the Kessel run in under 12 parsecs now i'll tell you right now i don't know what the fuck a parsec is right like a parsec like like it makes no sense cuz realistically whatever went down there right might have been 5 minutes in the movie but it seemed like it would have been like you know what i mean half an hour right type of thing in the actual like space but whatever i don't know what the fuck like i don't know what a parsec is don't care whatever right so after everything like they get back they're refining like you know what i mean the co- coaxium and han is essentially tries to convince kira to leave the crimson dawn and like you know join him out in space and she's like yeah no i can't yada 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 so then they go to collect the refined coaxium and this is where the pirates show you know what i mean han tries to bluff them saying we got a whole bunch of dudes on the ship like if you do it guys don't fuck off i just i'll call them over and then at this time lando just decides to fucking take off right and it's just like what is the odds of him just deciding to leave at that moment? You know what I mean? Like, so then basically they try and like resolve this without fucking getting into like a giant fight and what. So then we learn from the leader of the pirates that they're essentially trying to stop the five syndicates from fucking ravaging the universe. You know what I mean? Like the, you know, the, the pikes, the, the Crimson Dawn, like, they're fucking just destroying the universe, right? Just to get whatever the fuck they want. So, like, these pirates are not pirates. They're essentially the beginning of the rebellion, right? Which is kind of cool because we see that, you know, Han kind of been helping the rebellion since the get-go, right? And we do get a cool line later in the movie when the leader, she is like, you should join us. We're kind of like a rebellion. And Han's like, yeah, not gonna happen, right? But it's like, oh, you do. You know what I mean, right? So, I mean, that's a pretty cool callback, whatever the case may be. So Han tries to convince Beckett to stay and help them, but he essentially just rejects the offer, tells him, yo, meet me on Tatooine. You know, there's this big gangster that wants to, ha- like, that, that has a big job for us. You know what I mean? Who the fuck else is on Tatooine? Like, if you know anything about Star Wars, Tatooine is run by fucking Jabba the Hutt. That fat slug. You feel me? Another worm, like, fucking, like, syndicate leader. Like, what the fuck, dude? Like, why are they all dirty, nasty fucking worm things, right? Like, not even, like, the syndicates, but they're, like, you know what I mean? Like, the fucking gang leaders are fucking nasty worms. I don't get it. Don't fucking right but yeah so beckett tells him meet me on tatooine right he's got a job from jabba essentially and yeah he leaves so han chewy kira they go to go meet up with dryden right basically to try and trick him but then they actually get betrayed because beckett fucking just shows up because he's like i need my money but he goes and kind of tries to fuck them over. But then it turns out that Han knew this was going to happen. So he set them up. So instead of bringing the fake Quaxium in, he actually brought the real Quaxium there. And by doing so, it kind of... I guess because like the way he said, like, Beckett, you're predictable. So I guess he kind of planned for Beckett to be like, oh shit, this is the real Quaxium. He kills everybody in the room except Dryden, right? Grabs Chewie takes the Quaxium and fucking bounces. So as he fucking leaves, Dryden and Han start fighting, right? 
And we see Dryden, he's got his fucking weird little fucking daggers and whatnot. And, you know, it's got, it's not really anything special because Han clearly can't fight, you know what I mean, hand to hand, right? Especially not against this guy with his fake lightsaber knot, right? And then we see Kira. We think Kira is about to betray Han, right? And basically she was just trying to get Dryden off guard. And yeah, she slashes him, right? And then fucking stabs him in the chest with his own like knife thingy, right? And kills Dryden. Tells Han, go after fucking Chewie, right? She's going to stay back there, right? And she looks over and there's a whole bunch of diamonds everywhere. So she's going to steal all these diamonds to get, you know what I mean? Funds to get off, to get, to buy their own ship, basically, right? So Han's like, okay, cool. And... So he bounces to go get um, Chewie, right? But, you know, we learn that, you know, that's not really what Kira's plan is, right? We see that now she's going to take over for Dryden. He contacts the leader of the Crimson Dawn, who turns out to be Maul. The, he's not a Darth anymore. I don't want to call him Darth Maul. But, yeah, Darth Maul is essentially now the leader of the Crimson Dawn, which is... Pretty fucking cool. Like, I gotta tell you, Darth Maul got around, bro. Like, Darth Maul was a hoe. Like, you know what I mean? He was the leader of Mandalore. He fucking leader of the Pike Syndicate. Darth, like, a fucking he, part of the dark side. Like, he did so much shit. Like, Darth Maul is one of my favorite characters. He's, like, super, super cool, right? So, yeah, basically, we learn that he wants Kira to go meet him on his home planet. Right, which actually is kind of cool because we get to go to that planet on or in the video game. Yeah, they get to go back to the home planet of Dathomir, right? Which is you get actually get to go there in the fucking video game uh, with Cal Kestis, and uh, yeah, right. So it's it's not the fact that Kira joins the dark side, right? It's more so the fact because like yes. Maul is trained, you know what I mean, in the Force, or he has Force abilities, and he is, and he's been trained by the dark side, but he is not a Sith anymore, so technically, he, you know what I mean, Kira leaving to join him wouldn't be her joining the dark side, per se. She might learn about the dark side, which we find out, like, she was taught how to do, like, so, like, I, I think it's weapon combat. But like, not lightsaber combat, right? It's, like, with non-lightsabers. Pretty sure, like, so that's why she can scrap and what. So she essentially leaves in Dryden's ship. Han, right, runs into Beckett, right, and shoots Beckett in the chest because, you know, Beckett was going to kill him, right? He's like, yeah, you're smart. I was totally going to kill you. But, yeah, whatever. So Beckett's now dead. Chewie and Han take the Quaxium, give it to the fucking rebels, right? Then he leaves. Then we get this scene <laughs> on some random planet. I don't think they said the name of the planet, right? But this is where we see uh, we see Lando, right? He's playing some more Sabacc. Chewie and Han roll up on them, right? And, sh and Han basically challenges him to a rematch, essentially for the ship. And this time... Han basically stops him from cheating, and Han wins the fucking game. And I'm not sure if Han cheated himself, right? I have no idea. But he stopped Lando, and he won the ship. And you know what? That's 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 the end of the movie, right? So basically, we find out how Han got hit, got the Millennium Falcon, right? And that's that. That's that's the end of the movie. Credits. Normally, I know I do the good, the bad, the meh, right? But ah. Uh... I think I'm just going to save that for when I have guests. You know what I mean, right? Initially, as I'm going through the movie, I talk about what I like, what I don't. It's kind of thing. But, you know what I mean? Like I said, though, I enjoyed I enjoy this movie all around. Like it is a fun movie. It's nice getting the background on, you know, Han and and Chewie, right? All the little easter eggs in it, right? All that stuff was great. I really didn't care for all the stupid, like, corny jokes, right? There was one joke that I didn't mention was 
like Beckett was was on the gunning ship, right? And the gunner gets blown up, and Han's like, "Are you okay?" He's like, "Yeah, I am, but the but the gun is gone." He's like, "And it really hurt my thumbs." And I'm like, "That's so stupid, bro! Like, why did you? Why is that in the movie? You know what I mean?" But you know, other than that, really, really good. I mean, you you enjoyed it, yeah, yeah. So you know what I mean? It was a good movie, right? So yeah, all in all, we enjoyed it. So yeah, but. Yeah, so that pretty much brings us, you know, to the end of the episode. Yeah, like I said, rebranded. We're now Media Night Podcast, right? You can find us on social media at Media Night Podcast on all social medias. Yeah, and then make sure you look for our YouTube channel, also Media Night Podcast, right? We're going to be posting, you know, video game playthroughs on there. I post the video episodes on there right and yeah so yeah if you if you're watching it on youtube make sure you like and subscribe right always use new subscribers and yeah media night is part of the geek talk network so make sure you check out the other show on the network what in the anime with dustin and tyler if you're into anime that's the place you know what i mean that's the place to be so yeah check them out and yeah so i guess yeah it's been real Deuces.